If you have never seen Dodo Hedodo before you watch this video, then you are certainly missing out on one of the most unique experiences you will ever see in anime this year. While this anime may not have the most visually stunning shots of animation or the best action sequences you will ever see, I was personally blown away by how Dodo Hedodo managed to hit the sweet spot between bringing something different to the table while also keeping in what I loved about watching anime. At first glance, Dodo Hedodo looks weird with the aesthetics of its world and characters aching to taking a trip to the shadiest parts of Halloween Town. But for me, the bizarre nature of this anime intrigued me to no end because anime in general has set up this expectation for the most part that it must maintain some squeaky clean image of youthfulness that mainly caters to younger audiences. You can obviously see this pattern through how the majority of popular anime takes place in a school setting or how characters are drawn to look cuter or more attractive and even many characters behaving in a childlike manner. Now while I've personally accepted that my love for anime will last forever despite my personal issues with it, I can not admit that anime can get very repetitive to watch due to these same themes and stories constantly being retold over and over again. This is why as far as visual designs are concerned, Dodo Hedodo is automatically way more interesting because it's doing its own thing rather than blatantly trying to appeal to anime's common audience. However, the main hook for Dodo Hedodo is not just that everything looks weird for weirdness sake. While the visual design of this world is quite unconventional for an anime, Dodo Hedodo manages to balance the weird parts out by having some of the most likable characters you will ever meet in an anime. From the villains to the heroes and even the side characters, everyone in this anime is so well developed that any conflict that inevitably occurs between them feels like a field ending in a fight between your best friends who never got to know each other. So if you're wondering how exactly Dodo Hedodo goes about qualifying as one of the best anime stories you've probably never heard of before today, then stick around to see a breakdown of why you should watch the anime or read the manga. How's it going anime lovers? My name is David and today I want to talk to you guys some more about Dodo Hedodo. As some of you may know, there is already a first episode review of Dodo Hedodo on this channel, but after I finished watching the anime and read the manga, it was clear that there was so much more to discuss that Aniki didn't get to mention. I don't know if it's because I'm just really late to the party, but I personally feel like more people should be talking about this anime, so I wanted to use the anime versus manga series as another opportunity to bring some more attention to this amazing anime adaptation. During the first episode review, Aniki mentioned that he had a feeling that Dodo Hedodo was going to be something special, but what I was not expecting when I decided to watch the whole thing was for it to go beyond my expectations and become possibly one of the best anime I've seen this year. So today, I want to break down two ways in which the Dodo Hedodo anime adaptation amazed me and also try to convince you guys to give the manga a chance as well. Number 1 the world. When Netflix first announced that an anime adaptation for Dodo Hedodo was coming to its platform, I decided to pick up the first volume of the manga in order to see what all the fuss was about. Little did I know, my curiosity to learn about the story would transport me into a world created solely by one person named Kyuhayashida that would catch me by surprise. The first thing that I immediately noticed about the artistic direction of Dodo Hedodo was how dark and rough everything looked. The chaotically scribbled shadows penetrating every surface area of a panel like a symbiote from Spider-Man devouring its next host initially gave the manga a really gloomy vibe that I was not expecting when I wanted to read the manga. As a matter of fact, some parts of the manga can be so dimly lit that oftentimes it was very hard to make out what was going on which I can't admit was sometimes frustrating to get through. 
However, as I read more and more into the story, the stark contrast of the offbeat humor made the visual direction of the world kind of charming since I initially thought the vibe of the story was going to match the style of the art. <laughs> During my brief time researching what others before me thought about the manga, I noticed that the visual aspect of Dodo Hedero was one of the biggest points of divisiveness. And while I understand that this particular art style may not be for everyone, the art direction made sense given the setting of the story. Surprisingly enough, Dodo Hedero takes place in a world where people can use magic. However, this is not the typical betrayal of a magical world like you may have seen in other anime in the past. This is a unique universe in which there exists two worlds, the sorcerer's world and the human world. But the story is mostly set in a city known as the Hole, in which sorcerers visit this part of the human world in order to experiment with their magical powers and use them on people as if they were nothing more than lab rats. This problem happened so often in fact that all the smoke left over from sorcerers who use their magic in the hole would turn into precipitation and rain down leftover magic that can still affect anyone who is caught in it. Details about the setting, like the one I just described, is exactly why I believe that Dodo Hedero has one of the most unique worlds I've seen for an anime in a while. Generally speaking, most anime that deals with magic tend to really lean into the obvious tropes of a fantasy setting. But what I love about Dodo Hedero's setting is how well it combined modern ideas with elements of fantasy. And while there are modern weaponry such as guns that do exist in this world, there are also still things such as brooms that can act as transportation for sorcerers. Dodo Hedero is also just full of random references to food, movies, and fashion brands that I found to be quite amusing when I figured out what they were. For example, while most anime tend to stick very close to their Japanese roots when it comes to showcasing food, the world of Dodo Hedero is not only restricted to Japanese food references, but there are also unexpected references to other countries' cuisines such as French desserts and meat pies. <laughs> During one episode, there was even a scenario in which the corpses of humans who died from being the victims of magic rose from the graves with an insatiable hunger for flesh, which is an obvious reference to George Romero's classic film called The Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> There are also so many obvious video game references throughout the anime that I'm not going to spoil here since I want you guys to be surprised when you go watch the anime. They're not only quite obvious, but one of the best additions to discover in the anime adaptation. As for the characters living in this world, there is no better example of the huge amount of creativity Kyuhaya Shida displays than the way she spun the idea of how sorcerers are commonly portrayed. <laughs> The first thing that stood out to me about sorcerers in Dodo Hedero is the fact that they're not restricted to the mercy of needing wands in order to use their magical powers. 
Sorcerers are shown to be able to use magic in unique ways, such as spewing black smoke through their fingers or even using their breath in order to use their specific abilities. Sorcerers in Dodo Hedodo are also not restricted to wearing robes to represent that they can use magic, but instead they wear masks, which I think was a much more interesting idea since the masks added some spice to a sorcerer's personality and some of them can be downright horrifying to look at. <sighs> Another thing that I love about the character designs in Dodo Hedodo are the fashion statements that shouldn't work but totally do. For example, in the manga, Kaimin is spotted several times wearing Nike sneakers with his military inspired outfits and Nikaido loves wearing a jumpsuit that kind of makes her look like a car mechanic even though she runs a diner called the Hungry Bug. On the flip side, and loves wearing stuff that makes him look like he's prepared for the runway at any time and his allies unexpectedly wear outfits that are quite casual. Well, except for Shin who likes to wear sneakers with his suits. Shin, all of these examples I've mentioned so far are just some of the reasons why I loved the visual direction of Dodo Hedodo because it just felt so creative and unrestricted which made this world and the characters so much more unique and interesting to explore. Going back to the manga, I also couldn't help but admire the incredible amount of detail Q Hayashida puts into illustrating things such as the background and outfits of characters which made such a huge difference in my immersion of the world. Speaking of which, one of the biggest reasons why I think you should read the manga is because the manga doesn't shy away from showing the most gruesome parts of the story. While the anime does capture the brutality of the fights by showing a lot of blood and gore, I noticed that the anime censored some of the more extremely graphic moments that was originally in the manga. Dodo Hedodo is certainly meant for a more mature audience, so if you decide to read the manga, then you should keep in mind that there are a lot of moments that are extremely violent and that there is also a lot of uncensored nudity that the anime didn't show either. So as you guys can probably tell, I love reading the manga and I immensely enjoyed the presentation of this alternate universe in Dodo Hedodo. However, when it was time for me to watch the anime and see how it would handle the art style, I was slightly disappointed to learn that the anime went with a different direction and used CGI to present the story to the world. My main gripe with this change is that it created a totally different vibe in Dodo Hedodo than I had grown attached to while I was reading the manga. Instead of feeling the somberness and the tension of learning about what could possibly be lurking in the hole, the anime was brighter and much more colorful than I had hoped for which in turn made Dodo Hedodo seem much more zanier. However, as much as I wanted the visuals to stay the same, I will acknowledge that this change may have helped create a much more welcoming atmosphere to bring in more people to give this show a chance rather than intimidating a potential audience like the manga initially did. Overall, I thought that Animation Studio MAPPA did a good job of implementing the CGI since there were not any instances that I can remember where it looked really bad. However, I simply prefer the manga because I love the art style that Kyu Hayashida went with to present Dodo Hedodo. Number 2. The Story and the Characters 
So the reason why I decided to group these two reasons together instead of talking about them separately is because these two reasons pretty much go hand in hand in making Dodo Hedado such a pleasurable experience. Although the plot for Dodo Hedado isn't all that original, it's how the plot is used as a sort of vehicle to learn more about the world and its characters that made it great. So for those of you out there who have never seen Dodo Hedado before, the narrative summary is that Kaiman became a lizard man due to being a victim of magic and is now on a mission to not only recover his memories after getting amnesia, but to find out who did this to him and kill any sorcerers he meets along the way. The twist here is that for some reason, Anytime he devours somebody's head, a mysterious man shows up in his mouth that knows who did this to him. In the beginning of the first episode, we see that Kaiman and his friend Nikaido in their latest foray against two sorcerers named Matsumura and Fujita. while Matsumura unfortunately gets turned into a sushi dish after being confronted by Kaimen, Fujita manages to escape and informs his boss named N about what's been going on. Once N gets word from Fujita that Kaimen has been on a killing spree on a number of sorcerers who are a part of his crew, naturally, N wanted to take care of this problem quickly before it got any worse. However, after finding out that Kaiman was extremely hard to kill, he also wanted to figure out who used magic on Kaiman in order to find out a way to take him out, which eventually led him back to his own past that was somehow connected to Kaiman's past as well. <laughs> What I found to be the most interesting part about this plot is that instead of the antagonist constantly trying to figure out ways to kill the protagonist like any other normal story, both sides are working towards the same goal of solving the mystery of Kaiman's real identity. This unique situation then allowed the plot to cleverly unravel itself through not only learning more about the protagonist of the story, but also spending a lot of time with the antagonist as well. For example, there were a lot of episodes where the majority of the time was dedicated to seeing how the antagonists were tackling this mystery, and we got to see them in situations that showed off who they were and their personalities. What I love about the character development in Dodo Hedado is the way in which characters are put in situations that may seem kind of pointless to watch at first, but the situations are still connected in some way to developing the plot. For example, in one of the episodes for the anime adaptation, N attended an annual party with his crew in search of a woman to be his partner who could resurrect the dead. Now while this may have seemed kind of unnecessary at first, given that knowing about N's love life is not relevant to the progression of the story, the reason why he needed this specific sorcerer turned out to be connected to how he planned on solving the mystery behind Kaiman's real identity. As for the protagonist of the story, while trying to find out who Kaiman really is made for a good mystery to uncover, 
What I loved even more was how Kaiman's friends and colleagues also surprisingly have interesting pasts that could change how an audience could perceive them. Now I'm not going to delve into any particular character's past right now since a lot of their pasts are major spoiler territory, but what I do want to say though is that some of these protagonists have past connections to the antagonists and let me tell you, slowly learning about how these characters are intertwined with each other made me love them even more. <laughs> I honestly think that the biggest strength in the Dodo Hedodo anime is how naturally the story presents situations to get to know all these characters better without anything feeling unnecessary. Now while there is a couple of chapters from the manga that was cut from the anime, these chapters were not important to the progression of the story but were just more character development moments and I think that the adaptation did an excellent job at choosing the right content to leave behind. The only thing that really struck me as odd when it came to this method of storytelling was how little a lot of anime have tried this method of developing its characters. Admittedly, this sort of thing is really difficult to nail and I think that Q Hayashida did an excellent job at breaking away from the traditional stereotypes of good and evil and instead portraying these opposing groups as realistic people who simply have different goals. I have not read the manga any further than the anime ended, but just knowing that there is a possibility that some of these characters that I actually liked could be killed off later may be the only downside to the way Dodo Hedodo has been developing its characters. So if you happen to be one of those people who enjoy excellent character development and world building, then the anime is a great place to start. However, if you are looking for more content to see what else is shrouded in chaos in the world of Dodo Hedodo, then there is plenty more content waiting to be discovered in the manga. That is going to be it for my huge video on why I think Dodo Hedodo is so great, but I hope that this video has convinced some of you guys out there to give the anime a chance or check out the manga so that this series can get the recognition that it rightfully deserves and for another anime season to happen soon. But if any of you guys watching have already seen the anime adaptation for Dodo Hedodo or read the manga, then let me know in the comments below something I may have missed or even some of your favorite moments from the story. Also, please be sure to subscribe to stay in the know of what I'm up to next and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. So thank you guys for watching this video. Happy holidays and I will see you all in the beginning of the new year.